Hey, welcome back, everybody. You know, all this week we're trying to conquer different things that we've been enduring during quarantine, or as the kids like to call it these days, the Q. Get it? <laughs> kids are calling it the Q. Anyway, joining us today is a professor uh, at Tufts University, uh, Dr. Melinda Mocked Greenberg. She's going to help us. Hi, Dr. Melinda. Where do I begin? How can I say this? What what do we parents do when we can't help our kids with their, for an example, math homework? Well, I think that's a great question. And right now, parents are just so overwhelmed. And uh, it, parents are not trained as teachers. They were put into this role without a moment's notice, without any preparation. And a lot of people are feeling like, how can I actually teach my child any of this material? So I think the first thing is to recognize that teachers, uh, to be a good teacher takes a lot of training and a lot of experience. So we're not expecting parents to be experts, <clears throat> but it, you can really turn to people who are. So ask your child's teacher for guidance. How does the teacher want this information to be conveyed? Or turn to friends or family or even high school students or college students who might actually have more um, comfort with the subject material and maybe they could become a virtual study buddy with your child and help them through the things that are hard to do. What about, for example, about if your, your child is, some of my friends, uh, they have kids who throw a fit because they're having to do too much work and their parents are pushing them to do it. What if they are throwing a fit? Do you push them? Do you lay back? What's the balance of how to handle that situation? So I, I always tell parents that a child's behavior is a form of communication. And as parents, it's up to us to break the code and figure out what it is that kids are trying to tell us. So if kids are having meltdowns or throwing a fit, they're probably totally overwhelmed because their whole world has been turned upside down. I had one little girl who said to me that all the fun parts of school are gone, and the only thing that's left is all the homework. So kids are trying to figure things out. What I suggest to parents is pause, take a break if your child is upset, um, give them a little bit of time to regroup, be empathic, um, and then begin to contact people who might be able to be helpful. Like maybe check in with your child's teacher who might be able to work with the child around whatever that content or material is that's hard for them, um, and spend a little bit more time with them so that you can back off a little bit and be the, be the parent. You know, I have, my kids are much older, um, so it's, it's not that they're having tantrums, uh, they certainly are not, but when it comes to helping them, I keep turning to um, the web. I Google things, I look on YouTube. Is that helpful, um, or am I just, am I dragging them further, further down? <laughs> well, so it, I think it can be helpful, but there's so much material that's out on the internet. It can take an enormous amount of time to sift through and find what's valuable. And right now, parents don't have a lot of time. So um, I always suggest to start with the tried and true sites, um, people who have been doing online learning for a long time. There is a lot of good stuff out there, and it can be really helpful. What's the best way to create social experiences for them? Because obviously they don't have that connectivity that they get in the classrooms. So how can you do that from home? Well, exactly. And I think so many kids are feeling the loss of their friends and their teachers. Um, and it's very, very difficult. So um, I think it can be very helpful to set up virtual play dates. You can have two kids sitting on the floor playing Legos <clears throat> with their devices side by side, and, and they can have that experience of being in the presence of somebody else. And it, and it sort of satisfies some of that need to be social and need to be with others. And I think one other thing is um, <clears throat> I'm suggesting that a lot of teachers set up um, small group activities so the kids can be working with each other on projects when they're when they're at home, um, but doing it virtually. And during this time, do you think there's such a thing as too much screen time, or should we be limiting the amount of exposure they have to, you know, just that screen in their face all day? So I just don't think it's possible right now. I think we have to get rid of some of those constraints um, because everything is virtual. Social life is virtual, school is virtual. Um, it's just not gonna be possible. I think what's more important is to pay attention to what your children are watching and looking at on screens and to give them opportunities for some downtime and some breaks so that they're just not on the screens all day long. 
Well, it's good advice. Thank you for helping us conquer the queue today. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having we me. Yeah. Thank right, you. And for more uh, information on Dr. Melinda's tips, you can go to our website, kellyandryan.com.